today we are going to discuss mind body identity theory. We have already discussed uh, uh, behaviorism in this context. Today's discussion will focus on particularly Armstrong's thesis on mind body identity theory and Utis place famous hypothesis that is consciousness a brain process. So, today we will be discussing about Armstrong on the beginning and then later we will discuss place hypothesis. Now, let us go to this first uh, statement of uh, Armstrong one is uh, is consciousness a special type of behavior this is one of the central questions in uh, identity theory as we have discussed about the behaviorist thesis behaviorist considers mental states are dispositional states and mental states uh, cause behaviors. So, behaviors are manifestations of uh, brain states or what they call mental states. Now, mental events are different from psychological or brain events. If they are different from brain events, then the question is are they causally related to brain events meaning thereby this relationship is it logical relationship or a mere causal relationship. When I say mere causal relationship, then the question is is it a contingent identity that place and Armstrongs are talking about or is it a logical identity place and Armstrongs are talking about. So, what is what kind of identity thesis is being proposed here when they say that mental states are caused by brain processes or consciousness is identical with brain processes. So, looking at these questions about identity, we would be referring to Armstrong's uh, uh, thesis on identity that is the central state identity theory advocated by Armstrong talks about two main important points. One is the physical chemical mechanism and another is the attributive theory of mind. So, Armstrong considers that mind is nothing but a physical chemical mechanism, but he does not totally rule out the concept of mind. What he does is this that he attributes some kind of quality or properties to the mind to this entire function the physical chemical functions that are happening in the you know, brain or entire nervous systems taken into account. So, these are the two important points in Armstrong's uh, central state identity theory, but look at this uh, quotation from Armstrong. Armstrong's uh, this book uh, a materialistic theory of mind published in 1968 by Rotlich. it goes like this, this is to identify these inner states with physical chemical states of the brain, this is a contingent and scientific identification and it is it ill central state materialism. So, argument Armstrong's thesis on central state theory talks about a inner states, what kind of the notion of inner Armstrong is proposing, is it like the Cartesian theory of inner. According to Armstrong brain processes are certainly the inner you know events, okay. they are not the outer events, they are not given directly to our observations. So, what is directly given to our observations is behavior, now they are trying to reject the behaviorist thesis. According to them behaviorism is not a sound philosophical thesis to talk about human mind. What is important here is that the, the behaviors are directly caused by certain inner events and these inner events are of course, physical events because when he talks about the physico chemical processes uh, in the brain or the activities in the central nervous systems. So, the entire process the bodily mechanisms which are not given to us directly to observe and then talk about its identity. Armstrong is proposing a thesis that these inner states are causally related to the behavior 
and when they Armstrong and its followers um, argue that this causal relationship is possible, what is next? What is the status of mind? Now, they ascribe the uh, mental attributes to the behavior. So, mind as an ontological reality is not part of you now Armstrong's core agenda, rather mind uh, you know, becomes an epi phenomenon for uh, the identity theorist. Now, let us go into the details of uh, this uh, notion of identity that Armstrong is talking about. Now, as I said the causal relationship between the brain states or the central nervous system and the behavior is a kind of a contingent relationship, because it is not a logical relationship. When I say P and Q are logically related, what I mean is that whenever I talk about Q, the P is presupposed okay. and so the P is the necessary and sufficient condition for Q. So, that kind of and the absence of Q would talk about the absence of P as well. So, this kind of identity what I call the logical identity thesis is not strongly you know, advocated by Armstrong as well as by Place. Now, what they talk about is a kind of a contingent identifications. So, what they talk about it is a kind of a contingent identity. Now, what is a contingent identity? Since Armstrong is talking about a scientific hypothesis, he is proposing a scientific hypothesis, then all scientific hypotheses are falsifiable, they are not eternally true. So, we have seen in the case of Descartes and you know that the transcendental theory of mind, they advocate that mind is eternally true entity, if, if mind is or the mental is eternally true, it, it, it eternally exists. So, that kind of hypothesis is been rejected by um, Armstrong. For Armstrong, it is a kind of a contingent identity that the brain and the mind are contingently related. It is, we can say that say x is a brain state and x can cause y. Now, this identity is based on some kind of evidence. Now, we have an evidence for x okay, causing y. Now, it this relationship will be you know may not hold true when we talk about say y is caused by k. So, if we have a hypothesis here that pain is caused by the C fiber. Okay. So, whenever C fiber is stimulated, we understand that you no know, there is pain. So, so C fiber simulation is causally related to the experience of pain, but it may happen that after few years the neurologist will come out with some other evidences. No, the cause of pain is not only due to the C fiber, maybe it is due to something else. Let us say no D fiber is causing pain. So, this kind of revision is entirely possible and scientific analysis of the notion of mind will hold on to this uh, hypothesis. So, whenever Armstrong or Place will be talking about identity uh, theory, it is a causal identity theory, but not a logical identity theory, meaning thereby the causal identity theory will hold on to the contingent identity that the inner states are physico chemical states of the brain and this physico chemical states are contingently related with the brain processes. Now, the question that uh, arises here is this, is mind then an epiphenomenon, because what is the status of mind, because when I say that the mental is caused by brain processes, look at the whole you know, uh, scenario here, if we, if we say that mental is caused by the brain processes. Now, what is ontologically real is the brain processes. So, the brain becomes 
the the primary condition of causing the mind. So, now the question is, is mind an epiphenomenon? Armstrong will not assert on this proposition and say, yes, mind is an epiphenomenon. Rather, he does not deny entirely the notion of mind. What he asserts on this that the scientific understanding of mind is based on certain observable facts. Now, since there are observable evidences shows that certain mental phenomena are caused by brain processes. So, this observable facts there is a kind of a function, okay, there is some kind of a processes found in the neurological system of human organism and that may be causing you know the mental states or behavior. So, therefore, observable facts are to be taken into account and what is to be taken into account is that there is a kind of a stimulus response theory. Whenever we encounter certain facts, we respond to those facts in a particular way. So, that kind of a causal mechanism they will be talking about. So, what is uh, Armstrong's thesis is this the certain physical stimuli elicit certain behavior. So, this is kind of a causal chain eliciting is a kind of a causal mechanism that you know would show how brain processes are cause of our behavior. So, that is a kind of a uh, thesis which Armstrong would uh, propose. Armstrong would not deny entirely that there is nothing called mind. Okay. So, for him saying that mind is an epiphenomenon probably not correct. So, that will be you know my suggestions, because he talks about an attributed theory of mind, mind is attributed to this whole processes, okay. saying that experience, imagination etcetera are mental phenomena and they are attributed to you now the brain processes. Now, let us go further and see Armstrong's argument. Now, the central state materialism uh, or central state identity theory holds that when we are aware of mental states, let us say when we are experiencing mental states or thinking uh, something, what we are aware of are mere physical states of the brain, but we are not certainly aware of mental states as brain states. So, there is a mechanism which is going on and we are not aware of this mechanism. What we are aware of the facts that we are thinking something, let us say I am thinking about my lectures, okay, I am conscious of what I am saying or I am conscious of you know my students looking at me and listening to these lectures. So, these conscious experiences or awareness is what I am directly concerned with, what I can directly you know conscious of. But what is important here is to examine the thesis that there is something going on behind all this ex experience of mind, all this awareness of mind and that is what Armstrong calls an inner process. Inner for him does not mean that this inner is a mental process, inner here means a kind of a brain processes which are not observable directly, which are not experienced directly, which are not known directly. So, so in that sense the concept of inner has to be revised within this framework of the central state materialism. So, materialism will hold on to the ontological thesis of a, a matter. For him the mind is not ontologically you know, prior to the mentor, probably the mind is caused by the matter. So, that kind of thesis has to be considered when we talk about an identity theory in a, in a, in a typical case of identity uh, theory of for x kind of behavior, y is the cause. So, that kind of you know, identity at a, at a micro level is uh, possible. So, now 
uh, then the question arises when he talks about inner processes these inner processes are unconscious processes we are not conscious of this fact that unconscious mental states are real because when i say i am experiencing all of you sitting there before me and listening to my lectures now this idea of consciousness is so self evident in the case of descartes or so self evidently available to us is not considered you know something very significant in the uh, case of armstrong armstrong says these brain processes which are uh, inner reality to all our behaviors to all our you know uh, actions is something unconscious they are not conscious behaviors so probably armstrong's thesis is this that the unconscious mental states correspond to the neurological structure of the brain now this idea one has to look at because neurological processes in the brain are entirely unconscious so and that would give to you know some kind of a synthesis i would say that armstrong is trying to bring out when he talks about an attributive theory of mind and uh, psychophysical mechanism that are going on behind the whole process of uh, the mental what we call the mental or the the voluntary behavior so armstrong is not rejecting entirely the mind armstrong in fact gives a kind of a weak thesis of identity i would say when i would compare him with a ut place thesis on identity so in that con context armstrong is drawing a synthesis between the existence of the mind and the existence of the brain processes okay and how these two are related in a in the hypothesis called the central state identity theory now let us go to uh, look at what is ut place major concern now ut place as we all know is advocating an hypothesis consciousness is a brain process now this hypothesis is one of the major you know breakthrough in the discourse of philosophy of mind ut place a famous uh, hypothesis published in the british journal of psychology 1956 and place holds on to you know his hypothesis and writes another paper published in australian journal of philosophy in 1988 and this article corresponds to the previous one says 30 years on is consciousness still a brain process the the previous article is uh, titled as is consciousness a brain process so after 30 years unfortunately ut place passed away in 2004 ut place paper is consciousness a brain process is a major breakthrough in the discourse of philosophy of mind because the scientific understanding of mind is based on the simple hypothesis and ut place is uh, trying to locate what kind of identity theory philosophers are holding is it just a logical identity theory does the logical identity theory presuppose certain scientific facts i mean does it uh, have any connection with the scientific facts so that is place major concern i would uh, i would say so look at the main concern of place i have tried to capture it in this quotation he says the question i wish to raise is whether in making this assumption as assuming that brain processes cause consciousness let us assume that that is true and then he says we are inevitably committed to the dualist position the moment you say that the brain is causing the mind or the consciousness then you are committed to a dualistic notion of mind or a dualistic theory of mind now this dualistic position in which sensation and mental images 
from a separate category of processes over and above the physical and the physiological processes with which they are known to be correlated. So, what is important is that that the moment you talk about x is causing y and y here is a mental phenomenon and caused by x which is a brain process then you are already caught in the circle of dualism the kind of dualism probably Descartes is initiating and we all know that a Descartes is committing a kind of a mistake what Ryle calls a category mistakes. So, so this assumption that x causing y the mind is caused by brain processes and putting them in two separate categories say x and y is a problematic thesis. So, we need to look at this thesis more closely whether this thesis is based on certain observable facts or it is a kind of a mere logical assumption that is what is uh, plays main concern that over and above this process the physical and the physiological processes with which they are known to be correlated. So, we need to correlate the mental with the physical and, and what kind of correlation he is talking about. Now, that will be very clear when we look at the nature of the hypothesis. The nature of the hypothesis says consciousness is a process in the brain in my view is neither self contradictory nor self evident. So, it is not self evident as Descartes is proposing. So, therefore, he says it is a reasonable scientific hypothesis meaning thereby a reasonable scientific hypothesis may be falsifiable okay, based on certain new evidences that if a new evidence so us that the mental is not caused by brain processes then it is fine probably that will revise you know, the kind of hypothesis that place and other neuroscientists or other materialistic theories of mind are talking about that would certainly revise their hypothesis. But, so far as place thesis is concerned we what place uh, is pleading for is this that we need to find out the correlation and that is very important uh, challenge for all of us and the neuroscience is progressing today based on this hypothesis or the based on this assumption that there are certain sectors in the brain, there are certain places in the brain which are causing mental uh, phenomena. So, that is, is a something we need to talk about say one can say hypothalamus is the, the central part of the brain which is causing consciousness that is the recent thesis probably Sir would talk about and in fact, Searle's biological naturalism holds on to this hope that you know, a consciousness can be explained by brain processes. We would definitely look at you now Searle's theory of consciousness uh, little later in our class, but what is important here is this that this hypothesis in a way is based on certain scientific analogy. Analogy are certainly important to talk about scientific proof. Analogies are you know, drawn here uh, with a reference to lightning is a motion of electric charges like brain or consciousness is caused by brain processes. Now, this kind of uh, hypothesis is analogous to the hypothesis that lightning is nothing but a motion of electric charges. So, that is a kind of a analogy place is trying to draw here is a reasonable scientific hypothesis according to UT place. Now, what are the main arguments place is having? Now, the main arguments are mind brain identity is not a logical identity, but an empirical theory or a empirical identity based on the scientific evidences. Number two, brain processes cannot be dismissed on logical grounds. 
to say that I am aware of my experiences, my dreams, imaginations etcetera are self evidently true and this self evidence is something very personal and private to my consciousness is ruled out. So, we cannot just say they are logical, rather we have to prove that they hold a kind of an identity with reference to the scientific you know evidence. So, that is the hypothesis mainly talking about. So, inner process therefore, does not entail dualism. So, whenever the identity theory talks about the notion of inner, they do not really talk about the way the Cartesians talk about the notion of inner. Probably, the concept of inner needs to be you know little modified here and understood. Inner means that which is not directly observable. In that sense, inner has to be taken. I mean, as I, I have already talked about it. Now, we need to reflect that how plays go about uh, this hypothesis. Now, you get the definition of place. Place is the, the notion of ease here is uh, something very important. Now, ease here is uh, is in the sense of definition or in the sense of composition. So, there are two sense in which we can talk about the notion of ease that say consciousness is brain processes. Now, in what sense this ease is been used? That is what we need to uh, look at. Is it used in the, in the definitional sense or is you know something which composes its predicate. Say for example, if I say red is color that is the example he say gives red is a color. Here color is a predicate, predicate that defines the subject. Whenever we say that red is a color, but nothing else. If I say red is a color, but nothing else, probably this I would take in a definitional sense, because that color which is a predicate here necessarily defines the subject red. So, in that sense it will be a kind of a definitional notion of predicate, because I am saying red is a color, but nothing else. If I say this then and go back to the hypothesis that is consciousness is a brain process, this is the hypothesis that place is drawing here. If I go to that hypothesis, then I find place is using it in the sense of definition. Now, then what is been drawn here? This says that they are necessarily identical, these two say are necessarily identical C and B are necessarily identical or they are contingently identical, because necessary identity will talk about reduction that brain is necessarily related with consciousness or in uh, other way will talk about reductionism. Place is very much aware of this, but in place theoretical framework there is no reductionism, though place talks about identity. Therefore, he says the statements about sensation and mental images are reducible or analyzable in the statements about brain processes. Certainly, there are people who talk about this kind of thesis, but place identity thesis does not talk about you now this kind of a, a reductionism. Rather, about definition, he says the identity between the statement of consciousness and the statement of brain processes is manifestly false. It is manifestly false because it has not achieved what it was supposed to achieve. 
and therefore, it is manifestly false. Now, what it is supposed to gain? What place hypothesis is intending to prove here is our major concern. Now, the main concern here is this that is should be used in a definitional sense and is also uh, is used in a compositional sense. Now, as I mentioned about the statement red is a color is a definitional sense here red is a color, color is a predicate and he says that a square is a equilateral rectangle is another kind of a definition a square is a equilateral rectangle. This is a kind of a definition he is trying to now pose in a, in a compositional sense now what kind of composition that he is talking about. Now, in a compositional sense he says that her hat is bundle of straw tied together with string. Her hat is a bundle of straw tied together with string. Now, this here is is used in the sense of compositions in the sense of composition. Now, his table is not an old packing case is also used in the sense of composition. So, now uh, look at this analysis of uh, the nature of is say for example, if x is p and nothing else is used in the sense of prediction. Say for example, if I say water is uh, H 2 O, whether I am trying to use this term is in the sense of uh, prediction or in the sense of uh, composition. There are two ways in which uh, now we can use the term is. So, another is if I say P is Q, main is uh, rational or man is say biped, there are two ways in, in which you know each can be used. So, in the sense of composition and the sense of predication. The necessary statement when I say man is rational or water is H2O, then is is used in the sense of identity that is water is necessarily H2O having and the properties like two molecules of hydrogen and one molecule of oxygen. So, that necessarily defines what water is all about. So, place argues that uh, giving this uh, um, statement square is an equilateral rectangle and uh, she compares with uh, another statement it, it should be n uh, her, her table is an old pecking case. Now, in the later case you find the second statement here is uh, about uh, no giving the sense of uh, composition whereas, the, the first one gives us the impression of uh, identity if p and q water and h 2 o are the subject and predicate term then both are necessarily related that is one thing the necessary relation suggests that wherever there is q p is present and whenever q is absent p is also absent so in in that sense the concept of necessity is uh, uh, to be defined so, a uh, place argues that is when is used in the case of a definition, it is used in the sense of a necessary conditions. The kind of predication which has been used to talk about water or talk about uh, consciousness shows that the necessary uh, statement talks about uh, some kind of a identity between the subject and the predicate. So, in that sense, place is trying to prove his uh, hypothesis that consciousness is brain process. So, it is not a contingent uh, statement rather it is uh, a necessary statement because 
had it been a com, uh, contingent statement, it would have been false. If uh, somebody else says no, consciousness is not caused by brain processes, it is caused by some other function of the organism. So, let us say palpitation causes uh, consciousness, if somebody argues uh, that then this could be an, uh, treated uh, as an, a contingent statement, not a necessary statement. So, then we need to really define, look at in what sense place is talking about this identity or defining the necessity. Place argues and her argument is as follows that there is a relationship between the meaning of the expression forming the grammatical predicate and the meaning of the term forming the grammatical subject now, such that whenever the subject term is applicable the predicate must also be applicable. So, as I mentioned earlier that whenever I talk about the presence of Q or H 2 O in the case of water I also suggest that now, corresponding to this predicate, we have also the presence of the subject. So, in that sense, we are talking about some kind of a grammatical subject and a grammatical predicate. So, the subject predicate relationship or when we say that consciousness is brain process. So, this is what according to this is a kind of a grammatical predicate ascribed to the subject term say consciousness. And whenever we talk about their necessary relationship, we say that the grammatical subject is available along with the grammatical predicate or whenever we talk about the grammatical predicate, then the grammatical subject is presupposed. So, in that sense the kind of meaning they generate is nothing but a kind of a necessary relationship between the subject term and the predicate term. So, what we can conclude from this thesis is this that the meaning of these expressions must not be logically unconnected. When you say that consciousness and brain processes are two unconnected terms that is what place will not accept. In fact, they are logically connected with each other. So, place tries to draw our attention to this fact that this hypothesis that consciousness is a brain processes projects or proves this fact that we cannot uh, sideline the notion of uh, brain processes when we are talking about consciousness. Rather consciousness is always you know there with reference to the brain processes. That kind of connection is a logical connection and according to place they are not logically unconnected events. They are not logically unconnected because they talk about you know ontological dependency. Place in her thesis suggests that consciousness is ontologically dependent on brain processes. So, there are not two different ontologies. Okay. Rather, the notion of consciousness is ascribed to the brain processes. So, therefore, it is very important to talk about whether place hypothesis talks about any kind of a logical independency or place hypothesis talks about ontological dependency. Now, this is the major question which you know follows from the debate whether consciousness is caused by brain processes. Now, the place writes I quote if we lived in the world in which all tables without exception were pecking cases, then the concept of table and pecking cases in our language would not have their present logically independent status. So, place gives a kind of a linguistic analysis of this case when he talks about the subject term and predicate term relationship. The linguistic analysis shows that how a term is defined within the framework of a language or language use. Is it the case that when we define the concept of table stating that her table is a pecking case, is the pecking case always 
used as a predicate to define the subject table. That is the question which place is referring to. How a particular term is used and what kind of meaning it generates when it is being used. So, that is no place when concerned, because as we know place is arguing this thesis you know particularly Wittgenstein and many others in philosophy of language are talking about a used theory of meaning. The used theory of meaning suggests that language has a meaning or, or the meaning of a particular term could be understood with reference to its use in a particular context. So, what is important for the later Wittgensteinian is this that language use goes along with form of life. People who have read Wittgenstein must be aware of this fact that whenever Wittgenstein talks about a language use or what he calls language game, then the language game is it is associated with forms of life. So, language game and forms of life are logically connected. So, when place argues that when we talk about table and table can be defined as a kind of a pecking case, then is it the case that when we talk about pecking case, we talk about table or when we talk about table, it can necessarily supposes that we will be talking about the pecking case. So, that kind of logical relationship place is trying to draw and it is argued in the background of a used theory of a meaning. So, taking language into the entire discourse where identity statements can be analyzed. Let us look at the notion of identity from the point of view of observational facts. So, you have observational facts like when you talk about table, we talk about pecking case. Similarly, in, in a scientific you know, framework, when we talk about say water is H 2 O, then we certainly look for an observational fact, whether in every case that we talk about water, there we find you know, two molecules of hydrogen and one molecule of oxygen, is it the, the case. So, a scientific case is to be proved with reference to you know, observations. What are the observational conditions, which can say or which can suggest to us that there is a kind of a logical dependency between brain processes and consciousness. Place gives an example and look at this quotation of place. A cloud is large semi transparent mass with fleshy structure suspended in the atmosphere whose shape is subject to continual and kilodospic change. Whenever we imagine notion of cloud or whenever we talk about the notion of cloud, then we define cloud with reference to certain observational facts that it is a kind of a fleshy structure suspended in you know in the atmosphere whose space is subject to continuous kilodospic change. So, that is what a you know place talks about an observational facts with reference to cloud, but observation of what if it says, it says then it says what do we observe? We observe mass of tiny particles, water droplets and continuous motions. So, these are the things we find you now available when we talk about observations. So, being cloud must correspond to these observational facts. If it is not corresponding to the observational facts, then probably we will suggest that this is not cloud or this is something else, this is fog or whatever. So, there are so many interpretation one can draw. So, observational relationship is important when we talk about logical dependency or logical independency. If you say that water is constituted of S 2 O, then we must have observational facts corresponding to these statements. If we say that um, the table is always you know about the pecking case, then that kind of use must be there in the in our language 
So, our use of on a particular term table must correspond to the pecking case. So, this is also one kind of an observational facts like we talk about you know the clouds, we explain the notion of cloud. So, in, in that sense, so this observational relationship has to be invariably associated with each other. Now, whenever we talk about causal relationship that water H 2 O consciousness brain processes or table and pecking case, if whenever we talk about this kind of relationships, what place called a logical relationship, then this logical relationships are based on certain observational facts. And as you know observational facts are talking about causal relationships. When I say H 2 O causes water, okay, water is constituted of H 2 O, then this is a kind of a causal relationship that you know place will be talking about, because place wants to give a scientific understanding of consciousness. So, their scientific explanations not only depends on the observational facts, but how this observational facts constitute another fact that is important here. So, in this regard we need to look at the causal relationship of the micro elements of the water or the causal relationship between consciousness or the neural structures in the brains and the psychochemical processes which, which happens in the brain and how they you know uh, cause consciousness or conscious experiences, sensations and after images. So, there is a long debate you now this uh, identity theorist are holding right from Armstrong as I mentioned Armstrong plays to great extent J C C smart who is also you not know, trying to give you know, explanation of sensation with reference to brain processes. So, all these identity theorists are depending on the causal analysis or causal explanation of consciousness. So, in that sense they talk about a kind of a invariable associations between the two. If x and y say x and y are invariably related, whenever x is there y is also there or whenever y is there x is also there. So, that kind of a you now causal relationship or invariable relationship or association is necessary to talk about a scientific explanation of the hypothesis. Two sets of observations uh, that uh, place is talking about the case of compositions where lightning is like the motion of electric charges or lightning determines the occurrence of electric charges. So, there are two things we one can think of one if I say H 2 O determines what it, water is and H 2 O composes water. So, in that sense look at the, the terminology x determines the existence of y if I talk about x, x determines the existence of y. So, y is in fact occurring out of the x, therefore, x becomes a determining factor of y. Place is talking about a kind of a uh, determining factor. So, and the kind of a invariable correlationship and gives an example of uh, say moon and tide. Okay. So, whenever we talk about the rays of moon, okay, moon is raising and the level of tide is also raising. So, this kind of leveling example is used to talk about correlations, how they are causally correlated with each other. And in the case of a scientific facts, we need to talk about a technical observations, okay. a set of connections if we would like to determine, then probably we will be using scientific apparatus to observe certain facts. So, that is that, that kind of things uh, you know place is interested to bring in when we talk about the identity theory or to prove the hypothesis. He says there is a physiological explanations how does we talk about observation or introspective observations talking about sensation talking about after images uh, 
place would go uh, in favor of her thesis that there is a kind of a mental dispositional factor and that is responsible for causing you know these after images or sensations Pro along with smart and uh, um, Armstrong. So, place example of proving the hypothesis will depend on the chain of events. So, that is very important the chain of events the occurrence of this chain of events along with when we have a particular sensation in the mind that I am you now place gives this example. So, whenever we have a sensation we must see what kind of uh, events are occurring in the brain that will explain the sensation mental sensation place is drawing this from Serrington's uh, you know, nature of events Serrington in 1947 write this the inter interrogative action of nervous system okay, where he talks about two types of events one is the physico chemical events another is the psychical events. So, Davidson in one of his papers talks about mental events. So, I, I am sure you will take interest in reading Davidson's thesis of mental events, how mental events can be described with reference to certain um, physical events in the body. So, Davidson to some extent does not eliminate the physical events, the psychophysical events or the dispositional capacities and its causal relationship with uh, the behavior. Davidson does not rule out that. What place is trying to show here drawing a thesis from Serrington that there are two kinds of events one is the physico chemical events and another is the psychical events, but then place is also apprehensive of a kind of a mistake whether we are talking about what he called phenomenological fallacy. The logical mistake that place is apprehensive of one is this that is the mistake of supposing that when a subject describes his experience, when he describes how things look, sounds, taste or feel to him, he is describing the literal properties of the objects and events on the particular sort of internal cinema or a television screen usually referred to, to the modern psychological literature as phenomenological field. So, now as I have mentioned earlier that Descartes is giving a representational theory of mind. The mind is, is a kind of a inner chamber okay, where everything that is given to the mind is represented in a particular way. So, that kind of thesis Descartes is talking about and whenever one is giving a description of things that he is or she is experiencing. Now, these descriptions are nothing but how things are represented in my mind. So, is there a mind that it represents things? Okay. So, place is trying to attack the kind of representational thesis which Descartes is arguing. The Cartesian mind which represents things is not necessarily a kind of a ontologically real, but what is ontologically real is the brain mechanism, the psychophysical mechanism of the brain and that creates and gives us representations. So, our description of our experiences are due to the brain processes that is there going on in our brain. So, place will not talk about the kind of representational thesis which is argued by Descartes and some of the followers of Descartes. Let us summarize place thesis in this way that place along with Armstrong and smart those I did not discuss smart here, but I am sure those who are reading uh, the identity theories uh, they would also like to read Jesse's smart place does refer to smart in her paper. Smart says sensation and brain processes that is one of Smart's paper there also talks about how brain processes is an important factor giving or exhibiting the behavior. So, place tries to prove the scientific hypothesis 
which is a kind of a major established thesis so far and this hypothesis I think is still a kind of a correct hypothesis when place revisits it after 30 years and writes another paper 30 years on consciousness is a brain process. So, th that shows how place hypothesis is still working. If somebody wants to read identity theory, one cannot eliminate place as a hypothesis. One has to study place hypothesis very seriously in order to talk about functionalism, in order to talk about the neuroscientific or the philosophical understanding of neuroscience or consciousness. With this, I will conclude the discussion on identity theory.